Hassan, and I'm the director of programs for the Banneker Douglas Museum, located in downtown Annapolis, Maryland. And today I'd like to welcome you to our annual Kwanzaa celebration. Kwanzaa, the Swahili word for first that signifies the first fruits of the harvest, is an African-American holiday celebrated December 26th through January 1st. Founded by Dr. Ron Karenga in 1966, Kwanzaa marks a time when we as a people reflect on life, enjoy the fruits of our labor, and recommit ourselves to the collective achievement of a better life for our family, our community, and our people. Some symbols and customs include the makeka, a straw mat which symbolizes the tradition as the foundation on which all rests. The Kanara, a seven space candle holder representing the original stalk from which the African people originated. The Nguzu Saba, or seven principles of Kwanzaa, which include Umoja, unity, Kuji Chakalia, self determination, Ujima, collective work and responsibility, Ujama, cooperative economics, Nia, purpose, Kuwumba, creativity, and Imani faith. Typically, a candle is lit on a Kanara to signify a new day of Kwanzaa. Other customs include the Zawadi, gift giving, and Karuma, feast, which you will learn more about later on in the celebration. And although we come to you today on a virtual platform, we know that we prepared a program that's just as engaging and interactive as if we were right there in the museum. So now let's get the program started with an upbeat drumming performance from Baba Don Babatunde. Baba is the founder of the Percussion Arts Project and drummer for the legendary spoken word group, The Last Poets. In many African communities and communities of African descent, the Dehembe drums are played to communicate, celebrate, and inspire. So enjoy. In my family, we celebrate Kwanzaa. Every night, we light a candle on the Kanara. That's a candle holder with a candle for each of the seven nights of Kwanzaa. Are you ready to light the Kanara? And every night, we talk about one of the seven principles of Kwanzaa. Their idea for how to live a good life. Tonight's principle is Umoja. It means unity, coming together, getting along. Like when Tyler must be playing with his drum. <laughs> right. <laughs> My favorite part of Kwanzaa is the caramel. It's a feast on the sixth night. Kuumba where my whole family and friends gets together and celebrates. Oh, 
We eat lots of food, tell stories, and then in my family, we like to dance. We always have fun when we are together for Kwanzaa. And at the end of the night, we get a small present. My own drum! Wow! During Kwanzaa, gifts or Zawadi are given to encourage growth, achievement, and success. Handmade gifts are encouraged to promote self-determination, purpose, and creativity. The main guidelines for Zawadi are as follows. Children are the main recipients of Kwanzaa gifts. Gifts are given as acknowledgement of commitments made and kept. Gifts are not mandatory nor excessive. Now please enjoy a Zawadi presentation from BDMs and the Maryland Commission on African American History and Culture's Executive Director, Chanel Compton. Hi everyone, my name is Chanel Compton and... My uh, name is Janelle Rosa, yeah. known as Little Cool Bad Bunny, my YouTube channel. She has a YouTube channel. And YouTube. Like, you have 60,000 views. She thinks I have 60,000 views. I don't. But, uh, my name is Chanel, and I'm the executive director. And we are going to paint today. I'm going to copy your web. Yes. So, I am the teacher, and this is a student, and students listen, okay? So, let me, hold on, let me introduce myself. So my name is Chanel Compton. I'm the executive director of the Banner for Douglas Museum and the Maryland Commission on African American History and Culture. And this is my favorite person in the whole wide world. Known as Janelle Rosa Artist. Artist. Now, I'm also, you're also what? My favorite niece. Favorite niece. And I'm your favorite what? And we are. Oh, no, no. I'm your uh, favorite what? Uh, That's right. And we, we have supplies here. So yeah. we have water. Yeah. Well, first, but first, before we tell them the supplies, we have to tell them what we're making. So, what we're doing today is we're going to be making Zawadi gifts. Mm -hmm. And a Zawadi gift is a gift that you typically um, paint during Kwanzaa. It's Kwanzaa, but it's a handmade gift. So, usually during Christmas, you go out and you buy things for people. But for Kwanzaa, handmade gifts are really, really encouraged. So, we're going to be using our artistic talents today. To make handmade gifts, and who are you going to give your gift to? I'm going to give it to my mom. And I think I'm going to give it to my mom. All right, so let's make some gifts for our, the Wadi gifts for our mom. And also, I want to show you what we have. Okay. So we have water. We have first, water. And then we have our blue. Blue. Our own blue. We have our paint. Paint. Oranges, red, green, and yellow. Yes. And we also have black paint. Black. Paint brushes. Paint brushes. And, and we also have scissors. Scissors. And our teeth. Fabric. Fab fabric. Fabric. Okay, so just FYI, if you don't have all of these supplies at home, that's totally fine. If you don't have canvas, use a piece of paper. Or, or, or you can use like a cardboard thing. You can use right. cardboard. Or markers, you can use, instead of paint, you, you can, can use, use crayons, crayons markers, colored pencils. Colored pencils. If you don't have blue. You, gotta, you should have blue. Yeah. You definitely need to have blue. Blue is probably something you definitely need to have. Or, 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 um, roll on blue. If you don't have paint. Glue sticks. If you don't have paint, it's okay. You can use markers and crayons. Totally fine. It, and if you don't have fabric, you can use pieces of paper, colored paper. And you can make your own fabric. But on. you should have scissors. Definitely have scissors. This is important. But if you don't have scissors, you can rip the piece of paper. But I, we'll talk about that in a second. Before we and get too much into you're, it, you're probably wondering how are we going to cut? How how are we going to cut? Exactly. I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you. All right. So first, you're going to get your brush. 
the red brick. You're going to dip it in water. She's already did. All right. Dip in water. Now, you're going to do a wash. Do you know what a wash is? No, I do not. <laughs> so you're going to dip it in the paint. The green? So you do whatever color you want. All right. And you're going to spread it all around. Remember we did when we did your um your uh sipping paint for your birthday? Mm-hmm. Um, September eleventh. Yes. <laughs> yes. I just had birthday. So it's kinda like similar to I was that. born on twenty thirteen. Yes. So I'm seven. Mm-hmm. All right. So Dribble all all of it? Yes, yeah, so but you want to get it all. You can now. You can mix the colors by washing out your brush. And I'm going to dip mine into a little bit of yellow, for a little yellow like that. I'm gonna pour mine. Wait, wash, wash your brush out. Oh, before you dip it into another color, make sure you wash the brush out. So you see what I'm doing? Just making a nice little rinse, nice little background. That just makes perfect. It's okay if yours doesn't look the same. That it. That's actually really, that's great advice. Like, it does not have to look the same. Just whatever color you want. It's like where people teach you how to draw Spider-Man or Superman. Yep. It doesn't have to look the same because mine does not look the same. No. Yeah. Well. All right. Are you going to do yours all orange or? I'm going to mix it. All right. See, right now we're using different colors. So what I like to do is, can you pass in that tissue right there? So you can, yep, you can rinse your brush out this way, or, so you see you might have a little bit of excess water on yours. I like to like do a little pad it and have a little texture to your canvas. Just like that. And you're going to wait maybe just a couple of minutes. About five. I, actually, five minutes is good. Five minutes is really good. Have you done this before? No, I don't know. All right. But what you're going to do is make sure you rinse your brush out. So let's rinse your brush out just a little bit more. Get it nice and clean. Because you don't want to mix your green and your orange together because that's going to make a brown background, which is okay. But I don't know if that's good. Brown's ugly. Excuse me? No, no, ma'am. Never mind. You can edit that part out. That actually looks like a piece. Yeah. If you use a brown story. Are you gonna paint? Yeah, I'm good. So we're gonna mine is pretty much dry. So what do you your background? All the colors? Mm-hmm. No. Um you guys can continue drawing up color your whole paper. Color your whole paper. Or yeah. If you have one of these, you could do the same thing. Yep. You can even do the same color. Very true. Or different colors like purple, pink. Like me and my aunt did not do the same. Show it. Show it yours. See, we did it. Hers is lighter than mine. And it's all good. Beautiful background. All right, so we're going to let that dry for maybe like a Five couple minutes. minutes. Yeah. yeah. So let's, why don't you clean up your brushes and I'll get some more water and then we'll start up again. Yeah. So let me introduce myself. So I am an artist just like my aunt. I do Spider-Man's whole body and venom. And my name is Janelle Rose. I'm seven years old. My birthday was September 11th, 2013. I'm bored on that. And I'm really a talented, talented of my, of my paint. And I have a YouTube video about three subscribers now. And 
my friends watch my YouTube video from school, and yeah. So, what we're going to do is, you're going to take your small brush. Small brush? Why don't you take that brush? Okay, small brush. And I'm going to get a smaller brush, too. So, and also, I'm visiting Baltimore. I live in Georgia. I'm visiting Baltimore with my aunt, my cousin, my uncle. I'm visiting all my family here. And my great-great-grandma is here. My grandma, my little grandma, is here, too. And my mom is in Georgia right now because she couldn't come. She was working. And also... I'm very one quick for the cast. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So you're gonna get your brush, the small brush. Yeah. Okay. And wait. There you go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make a silhouette. Mm -hmm. We're gonna make a silhouette of a person. Now okay. it's pretty much. Is, have you ever been a stick figure? No, I have a stick person. Uh huh. Yeah. Pretty much that's what this this is. So, so you just draw a line and it draws some arms. Yeah. So you just do this. So you do an oval. Then you do the body, the legs. The arm. Just like that. So easy. Yeah, it is easy. If you guys can't do that, it's a well regular person. Wait, arm and arm. Shirt. So that. You don't have to draw a stick person? You don't have to? Yeah. Anyway. Oh, I'm good. You sure you're sick people? Whoa, wait, wait, put your fur. You don't want to get on your shirt. Wait. Oh, your feet. Finish. Okay. Looks good. There you go. Very nice. Boom. All right, so let's. What do you do? What is the person to do? Okay, so we're going to put that aside. Aside? And then we're going to put our paintbrushes aside. Let's put the brush in there. And take these. And we're going to make some clothes. Now, I'm going to do a head wrap. I want to do a head wrap. Okay, so I'm going to give you some blue. So what are we going to do is we're going to make clothes, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. What is this? You think you said you wanted a piece? I said I wanted the scissors. Oh, the scissors, sorry. <laughs> so I'm going to start the shirt. Wait, the shirt. Yeah, the shirt. So what you're doing is this. Well, let's do a head wrap. I have no idea what to do. All right, so I'll show you. So a head wrap is a hat. You know, um, if you go to places like if you went to Ghana or Nigeria, places that we're probably from um, ancestrally, um, they have beautiful head wraps. So we're gonna the women do. So we're going to make a beautiful head wrap. I dance for me, dance for me, dance for me. Uh-uh. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Is this like a hat? Can we do hair? Yeah, you can do hair. Dance for me, dance for me, dance for me. But let's do a head wrap. Because that's, that's the, it's, you want to celebrate the African ancestry. So 
You see how I did little pieces of um, fabric? Can you do that and put it on the head? No, I can't do that. So look. But why can't you do hair? You can do hair, but do the head right first. Why do you have to do that? Or you just put the stick on there? Uh uh. Wanna do the glue? The glue. Just one squirt on the. And just when you're gluing, just a little dab will do you. You know what I mean? Just a little dab. Like that? Mm hmm. I'm holding for 10 seconds. Uno, dos. Press cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, nueve, diez. No, I got it. It's okay, it's gonna die clear. No, you put the. Put another piece? Uh huh, and you can use different colors. You know, you have blue, you have um, pink, you have um, yellow. So I'm going to do another square thing, circle. Me. It's really you're just dressing the person. So you can make them wear a, some pants, a skirt. Um, I really like this style because it reminds me of paintings that you'll see if you went to like the, the Caribbean or um, folk type of folk art um, where you'll see the pictures of like people, either Caribbean women or maybe um, West African women in um, traditional garb. No, I and it's a really simple it. way of um, beautiful. I mean, they're typically really beautiful and colorful, um, but I just love it because um, you know, I don't know, it has a lot of character and people enjoy making them. So. So what I'm working on is the shirt now. I'm going, I'm doing a blue shirt because I love blue everything. So I'm doing a blue shirt right now. I'm also going to work on the arms. Short sleeves, like my shirt. My brand new outfit. Work on this. Just cover it up with um a cloth. It's okay. Work work on the outfit first. Okay. 
about size of a pea. You need to put a little bit blue of size of a pea, like a vegetable. So you see my shirt? Ow, now I'm going to do this blue pair. Shorts. Okay. Should I do long sleeves on my shirt? Sure. No, I'm not going to do that. Oh. Wait, what are you doing? You messed up. No. Yeah, you fell down a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Like a hat? Yep. Okay. You're probably wondering why you have to put a little bit of glue. Want to tell them why? Just a little dab will do you. You're, they're probably wondering why. Why? Tell them why. Why? You tell them. No! Um, because it gets too messy. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I want to tell them this way. Hmm. Maybe I more. Want to do a different pattern? No. Eyebrows. No, leave it blank. Don't put anything on there. This is very long. So I'm working on the pants now. Okay, so we are pretty much good. Um, we did a couple. So we did, I did this one. And so I did this one to get to my mom. So it's a beautiful silhouette of a woman. Um, and you can see the fabric again. I just used glue. Leftover pieces of fabric, uh, paint on canvas. Um, if you don't have canvas, remember you can use paper, you can use crayons, color pencils. But what really makes mixed media is the different uh, fabric or paper that you can put on the silhouette of the person. So there's my Zawadi gift. It literally took me 10 to 15 minutes to make. And for you. I did this for my uncle. Uncle, yep. Uncle, and I put my name and I used ice paint and fabric. You still did it. And can you spell the viewers? Oh my goodness, how cute that is. Hi, I bring you greetings from the Banneker Douglas Museum Friends and the Banneker Douglas Foundation Museum Incorporated. 
I am Burl Hall, and I am the chair of the Banneker Douglas Museum Foundation. As you know, we're in the midst of the largest civil rights movement in our nation's history. Every day people, teachers, students, parents, artists of all backgrounds are using their voices to educate and inspire social change for black citizens and all communities of color. As Maryland's official museum of African-American history and culture, Banneker Douglas Museum is the forefront of these efforts to embrace anti-racism and dismantle racist policies and systems. But we cannot do the work without your help. Our community outreach, the Brianna Taylor Mural Project and the Black Vote Mural Project reach far beyond the museum's doors. The Banneker Douglas Museum serves as a hub for historic preservation and a resource for social change and racial equality for all Marylanders. We are making great strides and positively impacting communities across the state but your help is essential to continue our momentum. As a supporter of social change and racial justice, we ask that you consider donating to our expanding anti-racism initiatives that will include free anti-racism teacher and community trainings, exhibitions, public art projects, annual youth conferences, and much, much more. With your help, we can meet our goal of $80,000 by year's end. Together, we have the power to affect real and positive change that will improve the lives of all Marylanders for generations to come. So today, we ask that you visit us at bdmuseum.maryland.gov and click donate to support the Banneker Douglas Museum and all of its programs. Thank you so much. The Karamu is a communal event that typically takes place on December 31st and the entire family can take part in the preparation. A large Kwanzaa setting should dominate the room where everyone will feast. A large makeka should be placed in the center of the floor where the food will be placed creatively and made accessible to all for self-service. Prior to and during the feast, an informative and entertaining program should be presented. Traditionally, the program involves welcoming, remembering, reassessing, recommitting, and rejoicing, concluded by a farewell statement and call for greater unity. Next up, we will have a cooking presentation from Charles Wilson, better known as the Classic Chef. In many African-American communities, cooking is extremely symbolic and a way of coming together to share stories and pass down history and traditions. Donna Battle Pierce, a journalist and food historian, explains of the African diaspora in America that as a culture, we had lost our language. We had lost our family, all of the things that bind a culture together. During the Black Power Movement of the 1960s and 70s, the term soul food was embraced because it was a way to talk about what we shared. And that sharing felt so good to have something in common with all of us with brown skin. Please enjoy as the classic chef passes down some of his tricks in the kitchen with his young assistant for the day. Hello everyone, my name is Charles Wilson, also known as the classic chef. Today I have Jabril with me. Hi, my name is Roberto. And today we'll be preparing a meal based off of and dedicated to Kwanzaa. Everything about what we're about to do today is based off about passing our legacy on to the next generation. You can find me on Instagram at classic underscore gentleman and my page should come very soon, the classic chef underscore. Watch us and check it out.
properly cleaning your collard greens, you want to use salt, water, and also vinegar. They have already been properly cleaned, so now we're going to have your girl actually cut them up into small pieces so we can put them in the oven. And not in the oven, but on the stove top. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and set it up for him. And I'm going to go ahead and give it one more rinse. So what you want to do is kind of just set it up like this. And this is a method that we have been doing for years. My grandmother taught me, my mother taught me, my father taught me, and now I'm passing it down to Jabril. Some people take the stem off, but I'm okay with the stem. I just want all the nutrients when it comes to your collard greens. And then you're going to roll it like this. And you're going to take a knife just to show you the first time. And you're going to cut it like that. Okay? Pull it with one hand and kind of. Okay, put them a little closer. Okay. We take it and we put it in the pot. Well, now we're about to do canyons. So the canyons that we have right now, we actually boil them for about 20 minutes. You don't want them too firm and you don't want them too soft because you have to put them in the oven for about 45 minutes. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put them inside this dish and then Jabril is going to tell you the ingredients that we're using. First we have ground nutmeg. Cinnamon sugar, ground cinnamon, pure vanilla extract, sugar, and brown sugar. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna put all the ingredients inside here. We can go ahead and shake this pure sugar across it like this, like so. And your brown sugar is going to be a little thicker, so just give me one second. And then we're gonna have your barrel do the toppings. And it's to your liking and what you like. So just go ahead and aim a little higher. Okay, I think that's good. So we're gonna show you. We might have to tap that on the back a little bit. That should be good. And you can do that. Alright, I think that's good to go. 
So then now we're gonna actually chop up some butter and put the butter on top. And why not drizzle a little bit of honey? And then you're gonna put this in the oven for about 45 minutes and then you'll be good to go. And you also wanna set your oven at about 420 degrees. So now what we're about to make is some cornbread. I am actually doing the non-traditional way because I'm actually using Jiffy. But hey, this is what we have and I'm a millennial and this is the next generation. So, you know, if we can do it like this, we will. But you can always look on Google for authentic recipes. So what we're gonna do first is actually open up the box. I'll let you grill corn first. And we're actually gonna do something a little different to this recipe as well. Mm -hmm. So it actually acts as for about three fourths cups of milk, but we didn't have a um, milk, so we have evaporation milk. Um, we're gonna use about half of this. I've never did this before, but I think it'll turn out pretty good. We're gonna add some sugar and some honey. Add one egg. And you're gonna actually stir it like this. So I think that is a little too wet. So what we're going to do is add a little bit more jiffy mix into it. Go ahead. Let me get it right quick and whip it up. And before we pour it in, you know, get it like this. And as I was growing up, I kind of remember my grandmother doing this. And I think that's one of the special things I remember. I think most of us can actually relate to is when your grandma was actually making like, or your mima, whatever name you actually want to call it, you will be able to lick the spoon or the actual bowl. I wasn't a fan of it. I'm not a fan of sweet, so that's probably why I don't know that too well. But, so what we're gonna do is kind of stir really good. I think it's still a little too, the consistency is not where I want it to be. So I'm actually gonna add a little bit more to it. And I'm gonna have Jabril oil these down and we're actually gonna put them in these little containers. And we're gonna oil it with some canola oil. for the consistency to be a little thicker. And I think we actually have exactly where we want it to be right now. You know what? Why not add some more honey? Not gonna hurt nobody. All right, and then we're gonna actually have Jabril spray the pan down. You might want to pull it like this. Give me one second to show you. Like that. Be a little gentle and spread it fast. Perfect. Up. Oh, I need you to go up around that area. Perfect. Ooh, Jabril, we got to throw some of this out. But that's okay. That's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do that to me now. But kind of hold it back. 
and then go like that. Nope, pull this right. hand back and go, now go. Yep, perfect. Now do this one just like that. Pull it back a little bit. Yeah, perfect, that's perfect. All right, now I'm gonna take each one. All right, that's one. Two. You wanna do one? Yeah. Okay. Get your last one while I go ahead and get the pans ready, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up. So go ahead and do that. Good, that's perfect right there. One more. One right here. Take this over here, put this in the sink. Go and take clean the sides. All right, and you're gonna pre preheat your oven for about 420, which we already did, since we were cooking all day. And we're gonna leave it in there for about 10 minutes. Now what we're about to do is prepare rice. Most people find it very difficult, but through gen different generations and passing it down to family members, I, one thing I did learn was, you're gonna go ahead and put your rice in here. And I like jasmine rice. And what you're gonna do next is you're gonna rinse it off. Then you're gonna rinse it off again. So the trick to cooking rice is just the amount of water. Some people measure by cup, but I actually don't. So what I do is, if you take a look at my finger, I let the water come up to this much above the rice. And I bring it to a boil, and once it comes to a boil, I then put it on low and then let it cook for about 15 minutes. So I'll show you. And this is definitely passed down from generation to generation. So now we are right there, you see the grill? Yeah. Now we should have some really good rice. Sprinkle some salt here. And then take it over to the oven. And we are all good, we are all good to go. We wanna first thank you guys and say happy Kwanzaa. This is the meal that we actually prepared. You have your mac and cheese, you have your yams, you have your white rice, you have your fried chicken, and your collard greens, and you also have your double eggs. And you have your cornbread right here. We're just gonna go ahead and drizzle a little bit of honey on top, and we're gonna top it off. Once again, we thank you again for being with us today. You can follow me on Instagram at classic underscore gentleman, and my cooking page, the classic chef underscore. Thank you, and we wish you the best, and remember to always pass it down to the next generation. A baragani. I said a baragani. By this point in the program, you may or may not have picked up on some of the language used during Kwanzaa. A lot of what you will hear is Swahili, a Bantu language widely used as a lingua franca in East Africa and having official status in several countries. In Swahili, a baragani translates to what's the news? This is the greeting used during Kwanzaa. When greeted with a baragani, one would typically reply with the principle of the day. So for instance, if I were to ask you a baragani on the first day of Kwanzaa, you would reply, umoja, because umoja is the first principle and marks the first day of Kwanzaa. 
Now, I know this may be a lot of information I'm sharing with you, so feel free to visit and subscribe to the museum's YouTube page in order to replay this entire program as well as past programs. Now, moving right along. This year, we really wanted to explore the dynamics of intergenerational engagement. So as you can see, all of our presentations have included young people and adults carrying out an activity. Our next presentation, Morning Discourse, is a collaboration of performance, sound, and installation art. The piece is choreographed and performed by Kay Harris and her daughter, Naya Harris. Both sound and installation are created by artist Nikki Brooks. The piece explores everyday blackness and the intricacies that come with surviving and thriving as a black woman in this country. said it was simple by Audre Lorde. There are so many roots to the tree of anger that sometimes the branches shatter before they bear. Sitting in Nettics, the women rally before they march, discussing the problematic girls they hire to make them free. An almost white counterman passes a waiting brother to serve them first. And the ladies neither notice nor reject the slighter pleasures of their slavery. But I, who am bound by my mirror as well as my bed, see causes in color as well as sex, and sit here wondering which me will survive all these liberations.
Which me will survive all these liberations? Welcome. What's news? I'm Cheryl McLeod. I'm a commissioner on the Maryland Commission on African American History and Culture. Today, we're going to look at the influence of Kwanzaa on community and intergenerational engagement. We're going to look at individual perseverance and collective action with the sub theme from 1619 through COVID-19. We are here, we are here, we are here. Let's begin. In 1966, Dr. Mulana Karenge introduced us to Kwanzaa. I quote, this is our duty to know our past and honor it, to engage our present and improve it, and to imagine a whole new future and forge it in the most ethical, effective, and expansive ways. One of our symbols of Kwanzaa is the Sankofa bird. It's from Ghana. Go back and get it. Fetch what is a risk of being left behind. As we move forward as movements, new learning begins. As forward progresses, the knowledge of the past must always be remembered. The first principle of Kwanzaa, Umoja, the black candle, is for the people. Umoja is unity. This is a unity stool made out of one piece of wood. And it is representative of our ancestors, strong as the trunk of a tree. As part of Umoja, we are helping each other stay together as families, communities, a nation, and a race of people. This unity stool provides us with the security and the support of telling our stories and of inventing new ones as we move forward in our experience here as African Americans in America. From 1619 to COVID-19. This is Angela, say her name, Angela. In 1619, the first Africans captured transported as cargo and enslaved, arrived in Point Comfort, 
Virginia, now known as Hampton, Virginia. Among the first ships included an African woman, Angela. Until 2019, 400 years later, her name was silenced in the uh, documentary record. Today, Angela represents the thousands of descendants of Africa as they tell their stories of race-based slavery in America. Angela, say her name. She's going to sit on the unity stool. We now have a representative of our youth. This is Brianna in 2020. COVID-19, a pandemic unlike any other illness or sickness, inflicted pain, injury, and death on the world. Its impact on African-American communities and communities of color in America exposed the pandemic of institutional, structural, systemic racism in America. Brianna Taylor, an emergency medical technician, a first responder, had her life violently taken away from us as a victim of systemic racism, oppression, and institutional racism in this country. Today, Brianna represents others who tell their story of the institutional racism and brutality that many African Americans experience today. Say her name. Brianna Taylor. There are other individuals and um, also other um, modes of communication by way of protest that we also want to share at this time. Am I Not a Brother? 1781. I am a man, 1968. My name is Kunta Kente, 1822. My name is George Floyd, 2020. Ain't I a woman, 1851. I'm every woman, 1978. A man was lynched yesterday, 1920. We are done dying, 2020. My name is Emmett Till, 1955. My name is Trayvon Martin, 2012. Power to the People, 1960. One Man, One Vote, 1960. We Shall Overcome, 1963. No Justice, No Peace, 1986. Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud, 1968. Black Lives Matter, 2013 and Beyond. Creativity, to raise up what is ruined, to repair what is damaged, to rejoice, what to rejoin what is severed, to replenish what is depleted, to strengthen what is weakened, to set right what is wrong, to make flourish 
that which is insecure or that which is undeveloped. Hariza Kwanzaa. Happy Kwanzaa. Black Lives Matter. We are here. We are here. Thank you so much, Commissioner McLeod. As usual, that presentation was extremely informative. Thank you for that learning experience. As we come to an end, we hope that you all learned something new about Kwanzaa today. We know this year has been a little different and many of us have experienced challenges. However, we hope we were able to brighten your holiday season with this presentation. We want to thank you all for supporting Banneker Douglas Museum throughout the year. Whether it was through attending one of our many virtual programs, monetary donations, and or your prayers, we appreciate it all. A special thank you to our generous sponsors, the Banneker Douglas Museum Foundation, the Maryland Commission on African American History and Culture, and the Governor's Office on Community Initiatives. And although this portion of the presentation is ending, we encourage you all to visit our virtual marketplace. You can access the vendor links on the main page of, of our website, www.bdmuseum.maryland.gov. There you will find some great items for, for purchase from black owned businesses. Finally, I would like to thank the staff of the Banneker Douglas Museum. It has been a long year apart, but we want you all to know that you are always near and dear to our hearts. Happy Kwanzaa and peace and blessings for a prosperous new year. I'm Chanel Compton, Executive Director of the Banneker Douglas Museum and the Maryland Commission on African American History and Culture, and I'm wishing you and your family a happy Kwanzaa. This is LaRon Herbert, the Administrative Manager for the Banneker Douglas Museum and the Special Assistant for the Maryland Commission on African American History and Culture, wishing you and yours a very happy Kwanzaa. Hello, this is Robert James, the marketing director at the Banneker Douglas Museum, and I just want to wish you and your family a happy Kwanzaa. Hi, I'm Sabria Hassan. I'm the director of programs for the Banneker Douglas Museum. And from my family to yours, happy Kwanzaa, happy new year, and peace to a marvelous 2021. Happy Kwanzaa and happy holidays.